Hey, welcome. We're going to take just a second to talk about basic wiring. We're going to show you the basic approach behind uh, how to wire a switch quickly, what to do with the individual wires, um, even which one goes where, so to speak. First, we'll talk about wire, different wire gauges and their uses. Um, you might find an application like this where you've got a 12 gauge wire, and this is called a 12 2 with a ground because it has two wires and then it has a ground wire that's bare. Occasionally, you'll find it with an insulated ground wire, but uh, that's a 12-2 wire. It's for a higher amp loads or if you're running a little farther from your breaker box or if you want to run um, a larger bedroom with more outlets, you might use 12 gauge wire to handle the extra amperage for that. But you might discover that in your home when you're working in those areas. This is just an example of a three wire with a ground setup. It's commonly used for stoves and things like that. This particular smaller gauge, or it's a 14-3, is a lower amperage load wire that you might find being used on a three-way switch or something like that where you need that extra third wire. Uh, so that's how that works. Now stripping these is just the same as uh, stripping. Really this, the 14-3 the is a little bit of a challenge because you still need to use a razor knife. You need to find a place between the wires to the best of your knowledge. Make a shallow cut that will allow you to peel it back and get it open. And once you've got it peeled back and open, you need to make sure that you didn't penetrate any of the insulation on the neighboring wires. Wow, my knife is really dull. But as you get that torn open, eventually you'll be able to get it far enough up where you can peel it up off the wire, like so. And then by holding the wire and pulling, you can remove the insulation down to where you need to. And at that point, you can use a pair of wire cutters or I'm using lineman's pliers in this case to cut off that extra insulation. And then you're ready to go. These individual wires, like I said, it's 14-3, so they're a 14 gauge. Now, what does that mean? The higher the number, the smaller the diameter of the wire. So a 14 gauge is smaller in diameter than a 12 gauge, and a 12 gauge is smaller in diameter than a 10 gauge. So that's what the gauges mean, what the numbers mean, and when it says 14.3, it means it has three wires with the ground. This is 14.2, the most common Romex used in residential electrical work. This is what you'll find throughout 80% of your home, and uh, chances are if you take off a switch or an outlet and get a good look at it, that's what it's got underneath it. Now they make it some great tools nowadays that make it a little easier to get this insulation off. This tool here, for instance, has a special place just for 14.2 and 12.2. You simply insert the wire into that area, give it a little squeeze and a wiggle, then you should be able to peel that insulation off and get right down to the wires without any risk of damaging the insulation on the individual wires. We used to use cable rippers to do that sort of thing, similar to how we did the 14-3, but there was always a chance you were going to gouge the insulation of one of these wires, and um, a vast majority of electrical fires are caused by circumstances like that. So this is definitely a better, safer way. Now if you were wiring a switch, say, like that switch, at this point you would separate your wires coming out of the box. You know your ground is going to go around a ground screw, you know your hot and your hot and your neutral are going to go around the appropriate wires. In this case of a switch, your neutral will get pigtailed on to the wire that goes up to the, the fixture that it's using. So it's really just this hot we're using. So we're going to pick the place for 14 right there. There's a place for 12 as well. But we're going to put the wire in the 14, uh, well, I was going to say about a half an inch, but the truth is there's a measurement on a lot of these. If you can see that right there, that is how far they want you to strip the wire. It's called the wire strip gauge. So basically we're trying to get it stripped that far down. And with a little bit of practice you'll get a feel for it and you'll know just about where to get it. Okay, now that I've got the insulation off, I'm going to want to grab it with the end of the tool and curl it like this. This tool is actually made so that when it wraps around the end of it, it should be the right diameter, that circle you made, to go right onto the screw that you need to go to put it on. Insert it on the screw and pull it tight. Make sure you put it so that the wire is traveling clockwise. 
if I were to put it this way, if I were to put it this way, as I tighten that screw, once it touched the wire and I continued tightening it, it would begin pushing that wire out of that area. So we always want to put them on clockwise. And then a standard Phillips screwdriver will tighten that up. The other hot that goes to the fixture will attach at this screw and then when it's on it will connect the two and you will be good to go. You would also normally run a jumper ground wire that would go to the fixture with the third separate leg that you would cut from a piece of scrap and run to the ground screw right that, curling it with the end of the tool in the same manner. So that's the basics of what you need to strip and curl for peeling the insulation back and the differences between some of the wire gauges you might find in residential wiring.